Good afternoon. Today is Monday, May 25th, 2020, uh, Memorial Day, and it's about uh, 3.20 p.m. Uh, here in Pasadena, California, and here's the update since uh, last weekend. So uh, we've been talking about the uh, PR campaign, and now in view of what looks like uh, the uh, we're going to get a full executed um, set of documents for our first uh, league fundraise. Again, withholding all the details until all of that can be worked out, including the announcement. Um, plenty of time uh, in terms of timeline, which is important. We need to have um, as much ramp up time as possible here to make it a success for everybody. So um, back to the PR, we were talking about starting that ahead of time, but it looks like that those things are now going to coincide. Um, so it's uh, not necessary to, d to discuss um, doing it ahead of time. It'll all be part of the same plan. As part of that, we're going to get into, um, as part of our broader PR campaign, I think it's important that we deal with the status of the SEC case. Uh, we just need to at least acknowledge its existence, I think, and uh, put out some kind of a position instead of just leaving it out there and waiting for somebody to find it. Um, and also in terms of claims that have haunted us pretty much from the start regarding uh, being a Ponzi scheme, we need to put that to rest in terms of explaining how it works and how in fact that that's, uh, that's not the case. Um, I think those things are important now before we get any more attention and uh, get attention as a result of ongoing efforts to recruit more leagues to list uh, beyond the first one, obviously. So ending fan lockouts, uh, this was a, a, an idea that's really back from, from 10 years ago. Uh, I showed some business cards that were produced back then uh, after the 2008-2009 crash, not really thinking about what that claim meant. I was really more thinking about it in terms of financial participation not in terms of being physically locked out of the stands, but that has become a symbol uh, essentially for the problem uh, writ large. So we're still working on how to incorporate that um, idea of breaking that fan lockout into the principal messaging. I think it's, it's a really powerful symbol while it's not going to last forever, it is going to last for quite a long time. And as a result, uh, we want to make the point while it is out there, um, what we mean by fan lockouts on the broader picture, not just this immediate moment, because obviously that couldn't have been known 10 years ago. That wasn't the idea, but it's, it's definitely a symbol for the bigger picture, and we want to make the most of it. So, uh, yeah, and getting the word out in terms of the manifesto and what that means, that's also going to be part of the campaign, but that's not nearly as important uh, as this other stuff. This is all kind of leading towards the same principal message, uh, what we're up to, why we've been working on this for as long as we have been, and why this is the moment for it. That's really what that's about. Um, raising more interest in the, in the order book. Um, obviously, we want to collect as many qualified uh, candidates as possible. And, you know, yeah, I, I think in terms of the PR messaging, in, in times of struggle like this, unfortunately, scams are even higher than normal. So uh, we should expect more scrutiny, not, not less scrutiny on, our, on anything we have to say. That also has <clears throat> um, brought me to the conclusion that we need to get out ahead of this and um, address those two things for sure up front. Uh, SEC involvement regarding the stock grants, not the market itself. And then the, um, the claim of Ponzi, which has been there pretty much from the beginning. And then finally, um, in terms of partnerships with the leagues, they, the partnership requirement to make the model function is not because we derive revenue from the league, it's the other way around. It's we provide revenue to the league. It's, it's it, it, we need the partnership to make the engine of the market work, meaning all the activity, all the exposure, 
the self-reinforcing nature of the pricing by publishing the prices to the market. You create a, a known pricing, which makes the market deeper and, and so forth. That's that's how it works. It's not that we need any um, we need any income coming back our way from the league to make the model work. Uh, <clears throat> the Atlanta Fed is now saying Q2 2020 uh, 34.9% drop. Um, just to reiterate, from the beginning I said it was about half cut in half. So now you have the Atlanta Federal uh, Reserve Bank saying 34.9. It's close. Um, the Atlantic is reporting that $10 trillion will be needed in stimulus to get out of this. It's it's twice that. It's $20 trillion also said the same thing. Uh, back in <clears throat> March or uh, early April, I think, late March. So Jack Ma resigning from SoftBank. Um, yeah, well... I don't know what possessed them to invest in WeWork. It was not a business model that was anything unique. Um, so I don't know much beyond that, but I know that's a flagship. So if that's any indicator, um, I think maybe a little less focus on hype and a little less or a little more uh, focus on the fundamentals. Um, like how's it going to make money? Uh, you might want to look at DraftKings to answer that question. Um, I'd like to know the answer to that uh, because the more the more volume, the more cost per loss or loss per customer. Um, the, the math never straightens out on that. Uh, so Emirates uh, airline to shed up to 30,000 jobs, just pointing out that if the uh, wealthy oil states can't get this airline business um, figured out, that's really bad news. College sports, um, several of them saying that they can't financially survive without, uh, te without uh, fans in the stands. We're back to this whole thing of how do we break this fan lockout. Um, <clears throat> gamblers, story, stories of gamblers looking at the stock market and, st and more stock investor stories. So, um, I see that as just an overall tick up in the interest in the stock markets. I'm not entirely surprised by that, given the environment we're in right now. A lot of time to look at things that people didn't have in the past. Delisting of Chinese uh, companies, threats of this kind of stuff, not productive to have these conversations going on right now. Uh, New York City rent trouble. Uh, yeah. Flagship for high-capacity landlords, <laughs> uh, much like Vegas for gambling online, and DraftKings for gambling, uh, or, uh, gambling on the ground, and then DraftKings in the uh, in online space. So one landlord saying, uh, one major New York City landlord saying, 80% uh, reporting no pay for April and May in rents. So that's going to very quickly draw up. Uh, uh, fall behind to to commercial real estate, obviously. Uh, mortgages falling behind, of course, because that's what's beneath the rents. Uh, Facebook work from home, uh, making a, a more broader policy, although it looks like they're winding that back a little bit. A um, couple of retail reports from some of the earlier states that are uh, reopening foot traffic in malls. Uh, <clears throat> high teens in like 80%, 70-80% foot traffic down from before. Again, this comes back to even if you loosen the restrictions, is the desire to go out going to be there and is it is the ability to spend going to be there? Okay, so um, I did receive word from Alper on uh, uh, Friday or yeah, Friday of last week. This is uh, this is Monday that we're expecting the full documentation package on on the first fundraise. This is one that we've been working on for a while, so this is not a brand new one. Uh, one we've been working on for a while, so I won't no no release of details will uh, be forthcoming until all of that's uh, worked out and including with uh, full permission, because of, of course we're going to need to publicize this. That's 
big part of making it work for everybody. So as soon as that uh, that clearance is has been released, um, then then we'll put out we'll we'll start putting that story out. Story about uh, negative inflation in Canada. Uh, first one that I've seen. FinTech trust being up relative to the last financial crisis. A um, couple stories about this. I'm waiting to see if this is just puffery from the fintech business industry or if it's real. Um, if there's more trust this time around in the financial sector than last time. Online learning uh, up considerably. That's not a surprise, as you might imagine. And then COVID-19 related fees being charged to customers. We'll see. It looks like the restaurant energy uh, industry is starting with that. I don't think it's going to work structured like this. Uh, it's going to have some other way of making up for that revenue other than hitting customers in the face with it is going to have to be figured out. Um, anyway, so that's everything. Uh, big news is definitely this, uh, the first deal, but I need to hold the details until we, uh, we have the, the permission to, to release all of that and, um, and along with a calendar. So uh, stay safe, and that's all I have to report this week. Bye now.